And I said, what does painting mean to you? And he said, painting is the most intimate act of war. I mean, there was a sense of, of hyper alertness. When you're in an environment that's, that's, that's dangerous, there's an automatic uh, hyper alertness that you're, you're in instinctive, instinctive mode, much more than a rational mode. Again, to use banks as an example, but you, you know, his is a very naive political message. But it's something that resonated right away across the board. People liked the message. Same with JR, you know, same with Marcus. You know, I guess what, what partially drives me is simply to get some kind of sense of truth. I've picked up that he's somebody that's been in the trenches and it's kind of nice because there's murals on the trench walls. If you look around, you'll probably find a handful that are actually trying to say something on a political level. I've been out here every day since, I would say, 1999. You know, I used to take the train from the Bronx, set up on Prince Street. I remember him, I remember him. Was, um, was a painting called Harlem Deli. Uh, John Ortiz came by and uh, he bought the painting, I think for $350 at the time. Uh, when I was in New York, it was the time of Pasquiat, uh, Warhol, People try to use that gambit by taking a graffiti artist and turning them into into some kind of museum art. They did it with Banksy as well. We, we you know, this isn't real art. This isn't made properly. As a society, the New York art world is not a just society. For ninety-eight million dollars. Thank you, Yuki. You know, we'd sell a painting for like twenty grand. People go, this is just not going to last. It's not possible. You know. Oh, I just sold another five. It wasn't something I had to work for. It was very natural for me based on my own experiences and uh, based on needing some kind of journalistic commentary in this century. We have a lot of propaganda, but there's not too much documentation. I couldn't compare him to, to anybody alive or dead. 